Hey, what's up guys? Will here for GSM Arena. If you're looking for a phone with high-end specs and features, you generally have a couple of categories to choose from, a full-on flagship or a flagship killer. So of these sorts of devices, which are our top picks for 2022? Let's find out in our holiday buyer's guide. We'll start off with the flagship killers. These are phones that bring high-end hardware, especially the chipset, but at a much lower price than a true flagship. First, we have the OnePlus 10T, which goes for about 650 euros or US dollars nowadays. And that's the upper price limit we set for this category. Where this phone stands out from other flagship killers is that it brings the new top Qualcomm chipset, a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. So it has the edge when it comes to performance. The thermals are pretty stable here too. The phone also supports up to 150 watt charging. You get the needed charger in the box, and it's blazing fast. And that's not just a crutch for the battery life either. The OnePlus 10T's battery endurance is pretty good. On the front is a bright AMOLED display with 10-bit color and a 120Hz refresh rate. Unfortunately, there's no support for high frame rate gaming here. And for cameras, the image quality out of the main camera is excellent, whether it's daytime or night. The other cameras are nothing too special. If you're looking for an edge when it comes to the chipset performance, and a combination of both good battery life and crazy fast charging, the OnePlus 10T could be for you. The next phone on our list is the Motorola Edge 30 Pro, aka the Motorola Edge Plus 2022 in the US. You can find it for less than 650 euros. It even goes down to 600 with rebates. In the US, it can be had for 700 bucks, but that one comes with 512 gigs of storage. Unlike the OnePlus, the Edge 30 Pro runs on the previous top Qualcomm chipset, the regular Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Of course, the performance is again great, and the thermal management is decent here too. One thing that sets this flagship killer apart is its OLED display, which has an extra fast 144Hz refresh rate, so swiping and scrolling is just that much smoother. The Edge 30 Pro's display is also unique in that it has stylus support. You'd have to buy the stylus separately though. There is one slight downside. The panel doesn't get quite as bright as the competitors, but it's still perfectly usable. On the back, you get a capable set of cameras, which includes a high-res ultra-wide with autofocus that can take close-ups. When it comes to battery life, the Edge 30 Pro's performance is just mediocre. But there is a 68-watt charger that comes in the box, and the charging speed is plenty fast. So at the end of the day, the Edge 30 Pro is where you might want to look if you need a flagship killer with a smoother screen and stylus support. Next, we have the Realme GT2 Pro, which is selling for around 620 euros. The GT2 Pro is able to provide powerful chipset performance with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, and its thermal management is above average too. Plus, it has an AMOLED display with LTPO2 technology, a 120Hz refresh rate, and support for 10-bit color. The LTPO2 tech means the refresh rate is extra adaptive, dialing down to as low as 1Hz to save power. There's no support for high frame rate gaming though. Battery life is great, and there's 65 watt charging, which on this list might not sound so impressive, but it's still really fast. The GT2 Pro has nice camera quality from its main cam, plus you get a high res ultra wide and a unique microscope cam with 20 times magnification. And last but not least, the phone has an interesting textured design, made not from glass, but bio-based polymer. So while the Realme GT2 Pro doesn't have face-melting charging speed, it provides a well-rounded experience at a reasonable price. Speaking of the price, that's where our next pick comes in, our editor's choice for a flagship killer because of just how value-packed it is. I'm talking about the Poco F4 GT, the least expensive flagship killer on our list at 530 euros. The Poco GT series is known for its gaming-related features, like retractable hardware triggers. You don't see these very often, they're clicky and responsive, and can give you an advantage in things like racing games or shooters. The phone has flagship grade silicon with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. You don't get a special cooling system like you might find on other so-called gaming phones. The thermals are handled in a similar way to current flagships. The F4 GT has a nice AMOLED display with a 120Hz refresh rate and a 480Hz touch sampling rate for better in-game responsiveness. And for audio, the F4 GT has a unique quad speaker setup, rather than the stereo speakers you typically see on these sorts of phones. Battery life is a weak point here. Like the Edge 30 Pro, it's a bit lackluster. 
But to help make up for it, the F4 GT has incredibly fast 120 watt charging. It's among the fastest we've seen yet. The phone has a triple camera setup, including an ultra wide and a macro camera. Image quality during the day is great, and video recording and selfies are top notch too. Unfortunately, the Poco F4 GT isn't sold in some markets such as India, but if you can find it available, it's our top pick because it provides so much bang for your buck, especially for gamers. Now let's move on to the heavy hitters, the true flagships. These phones tend to have better displays than the flagship killers, as well as cutting edge cameras. We'll start off with the 850 euro Xiaomi 12 Pro. It brings a high-res 1440p AMOLED display, which features a 120Hz refresh rate with extra adaptive LTPO2 technology. The display is really bright too. We measured over a thousand nits here. Like the Poco F4 GT, there is a quad speaker setup here, consisting of a tweeter and a woofer on each end of the phone. Rather than a mid-range quality setup, the Xiaomi 12 Pro packs flagship-grade triple cameras, a main, ultra-wide, and two times telephoto, and the overall quality is quite good. Our main concerns were that the two times telephoto doesn't provide as much reach as some competitors, and the ultra-wide doesn't have autofocus, so you can't take close-ups with it. The Xiaomi 12 Pro has a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset, and the peak performance is some of the best around. But on the Xiaomi, we did measure some heavy thermal throttling in our stress tests. And maybe as a result of the power-hungry screen and chipset, the battery life of the 12 Pro is quite unimpressive. But at least you get the same incredibly fast 120 watt charging as on the Poco F4 GT. The Xiaomi 12 Pro does bring a few compromises, but it also has a lot to offer. And keep in mind that it comes at a lower price than many other flagships. Our next pick is the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra, which you can find for around 880 euros. This phone brings some heavy hitting specs, including a main camera with a huge 200 megapixel resolution. That's paired with an ultra wide with autofocus and a two times telephoto cam. The quality from the main cam is great and the other two cameras are good as well. What we didn't like though was the lack of 4K video support on the ultra wide and telephoto. On the front, the Edge 30 Ultra has a high res 60 megapixel selfie camera and it does an excellent job. Besides the cameras, the phone has a 10 bit OLED screen with over a thousand nits of max brightness. And like the Edge 30 Pro, it has an extra fast 144Hz refresh rate. The Edge 30 Ultra has the latest and greatest Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset, and peak performance is excellent. The thermal management isn't great, but it is better than on the Xiaomi 12 Pro. You also get good battery life here, and that's backed up by very fast 125 watt power delivery charging. The Moto Edge 30 Ultra is a well-balanced flagship, and the main cam's resolution gives it some bragging rights, and it all costs less than a thousand bucks. We can't have a flagship list without bringing up an iPhone. Here we have the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and it's the most expensive phone of the bunch at 1500 euros. Ouch. But this is the latest and greatest from Apple, who are finally bringing the iPhones up to speed with modern features, such as the always on display. There's also a pill shaped notch for the selfie cam called the Dynamic Island, and it adds some extra functionality. The OLED screen itself has gotten a brightness upgrade, to a maximum of almost 1800 nits. And there's of course your yearly performance boost with the new Apple A16 Bionic chipset. The 14 Pro Max also has a new 48 megapixel main camera, which bins pixels to produce 12 megapixel photos. That's paired with a 3x telephoto zoom, an ultra wide, and a lidar scanner. Overall, the quality is great, with a signature iPhone look to the stills, and excellent video stabilization. Recent iPhones have full IP68 rated protection against dust and water, up to a depth of 6 meters. And like last year, the iPhone 14 Pro Max has some of the best battery life of any iPhone, or any flagship for that matter. Charging on the other hand is a different story. You don't get a charger in the box, and when you do plug in, the speed is nothing special. Of course, you get iOS here, not Android, and it comes with a ton of features and great software support. What can I say? It's the new iPhone. And while it's not a huge leap from last year, it definitely deserves its spot on our list. Now that we're past the iPhone, we're almost done here, and it's time to reveal our editor's choice for a flagship this holiday season. That would actually be the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4, since it provides not only a well-rounded set of flagship features, but it offers a unique user experience too. Of course, a high price comes with the territory, and with a 1200 euro price tag, the Galaxy Z Fold 4 is anything but cheap. 
affordable phones still haven't gone mainstream, and competition is still limited to the Chinese market. But Samsung has made plenty of refinements over the Z Fold generations, especially when it comes to the hinge and design. You also get IPX8 protection against water here, which is impressive considering all of the moving parts. While folded, you can use the Z Fold 4's AMOLED cover screen to accomplish all the same tasks you would with a normal smartphone. And when you open it up, you get a large inner AMOLED, which provides an experience closer to a small tablet than a phone. Both the outer and inner screens have a fast 120Hz refresh rate too, which is very adaptive. And the Z Fold 4 has stylus support, though you need a special stylus provided by Samsung which won't scratch the inner screen. Samsung has also done a great job optimizing the software to make use of the extra screen space for multitasking. The chipset of the phone is a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, and its performance is among the best. But like other flagships running on this silicon, thermal management leaves more to be desired. The battery of the Galaxy Z Fold 4 is larger than last year, and battery life is better too. But the charging situation is similar to the iPhone. It's just average, and you don't get an adapter in the box either. The Z Fold 4 has a triple camera setup with a main, ultra-wide, and 3x telephoto cam. They provide good quality both in videos and stills. And one neat trick, which is possible thanks to the foldable design, is that you can take selfies with the rear cameras using the cover screen as a viewfinder. The Z Fold 4 is a special device. You get solid, flagship-grade features, plus the folding screen and stylus add even more functionality on top of that. So there you have it guys, our choices for the best flagships and flagship killers of the year. I hope this list helps you find the premium phone you're looking for this season. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.